It was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives. After months of planning and anticipation, Joshua and I were finally ready to tie the knot. Joshua, standing beside me in his dapper suit, gently took my hand in his and whispered, "I am so lucky that I get to marry you and call you my wife." I feel the same way, my love," I replied softly, as a blush tinged my cheeks. This is the exact wedding I have been dreaming of, ever since I was a little girl. Every detail, every touch of magic, has been carefully planned. Nothing could ever ruin my happiness today. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Little did we know there was a deep-rooted hatred that was about to manifest itself in the most sinister way. As the ceremony began, I could not help but notice the icy glare coming from my mother-in-law Margaret. Throughout our courtship and engagement, she had made it clear that she disapproved of me. Carla, dear, you look human today. I never thought I would ever live to see it. And this wedding dress, I'm surprised it still fits. Her offensive remarks on my appearances were nothing new to me. I had grown accustomed to her critical nature and had learned to brush it off, especially today. Today is my day, and no one gets to steal it from me. Thank you、uh, for coming, Margaret. It means a lot to have you here on our special day. I said sarcastically, with a hint of truth in it. Joshua and I truly did not expect for her to come, especially after hearing about how she had flown into rage after hearing the news of our engagement that she ripped up the invitations. As the ceremony progressed, we could not help but notice Margaret's constant presence near the refreshment table, where the drinks were carefully laid out. She seemed overly eager, even when the crew offered to assist her to her seat. Joshua and I exchanged glances, and I joke, "It seems like your mother is trying her hardest to get a head start on getting drunk. She really does not want to remember any of this, does she?" Joshua chuckled. "You might be onto something, my love, but let us not dwell on it today. This is our day, remember." The ceremony continued, and we let go of our concerns, trusting that the day would definitely unfold exactly as planned. Suddenly, a faint but unmistakable sound broke the tranquility of the venue. Someone had to let out a small, unexpected fart. The room erupted into laughter, and we all brushed it off as a comic relief, since it was truly cold in the venue after all. However, as the laughter subsided, a gut-wrenching noise filled the air, catching everyone's attention. A guest near the back had vomited. We initially thought it would only be someone having too much to drink. However, More people vomited afterwards, and it was the moment it became apparent that it was no coincidence. Was the catering serving too many alcoholic drinks, or perhaps they were serving foul food? The beautiful atmosphere we had envisioned for our wedding turned into chaos. Joshua and I approached one of our guests, hoping to get to the bottom of the unfolding disaster. Hey, what happened? With confusion on their faces, they answered us with a qu- quivering voice. I didn't even eat anything yet. I only had a, f- a few sips from one of those drinks. We followed their gaze, and sure enough, it led directly to the table of drinks Margaret sponsored. The realization hit us like a ton of bricks. We made our way to my mother-in-law and whispered to her, "Mom, it seems that the issue may be with the drinks you arranged." Margaret's face contorted with disbelief and anger. "What? This is unacceptable! I will not let this slide. We need to sue the beverage company and hold them accountable for ruining your wedding." 
We were surprised with her outburst, but Joshua and I understood how any person would naturally react given the severity of the incident. I will not rest until they answer this. This is their fault, Joshua. They ruined your special day and they will pay for it. Margaret shouted as she was furiously dialing the beverage company's customer service line. Aside from my worry for the health of my guests and Margaret's anger, I could not help but worry about the impact this would have on our wedding footage. How would the cameraman work his magic to make it all still look beautiful? Would this be the moment I want to be fossilized forever? and to watch when Joshua and I are on our deathbed. The wedding came to an early end and everyone went home, except for our families. Immediately after our wedding, both sides of the family gathered at our home to make sense of what had happened. Tiredness washed over me and it was obvious with my weary eyes and slumped shoulders. Hey. Why don't we watch the same day edit of our wedding day together? We can watch the beautiful moments that we can focus on instead, Joshua suggested. He would always be observant of my emotions and he would always try to cheer me up whenever I'm feeling down. That's why I married him. Joshua took the wedding video CD and inserted it into the DVD player. As the video started playing, we were all watching it with glee as we were transported back to that magical atmosphere. But as the video progressed, capturing snippets of the wedding ceremony, a sense of unease settled in. Thank you, Joshua, but I think I'm just too tired right now. I want to view it when I'm in a better mood so I can fully appreciate it fully. Let us just uh, rest and sleep the night away and watch it tomorrow. Yes, Joshua. You should let your wife rest first. Didn't I teach you how to treat your woman properly? My mother-in-law bought it in. It took me by surprise on how she took my side. Did her heart finally soften for me after that terrible incident? As I reached out to pause the video, I accidentally froze the frame on a shocking image. There, captured in that exact moment, was my mother-in-law, Margaret, pouring a suspicious substance into the refreshment in the background. All of our eyes widened in disbelief. Hold on a second. Margaret's husband, Richard, exclaimed. Margaret, what is that? What were you pouring into the refreshment? No, mother, you, you did not. Joshua's voice was trembling with shock and realization. Do you tamper with the drains to sabotage our wedding? You poisoned our guests? The room fell into a stunned silence as all eyes were fixated on the damning evidence displayed on the screen. I know how anger and betrayal welled up within Joshua and his father, especially when food poisoning was the same reason Joshua's sister died when they were very young. The room was thick with tension as we were all ready to confront Margaret about her malicious act. Margaret responded with a feeble excuse. I poured powdered drinks because the drinks tasted bland. She also got more and more defensive. Why are you all ganging up on me? I am innocent. For all we know, I was poisoned too. And the poison is just taking a little bit more time to take hold on my body. You should call 911 for me. Stop lying. If there is anyone we should call right now, it's the police and not 911. This is a deliberate act and you know it. Joshua threatened his mother and I'm glad I married a man who would fight and defend our marriage. My mother-in-law probably did not expect her own son to threaten her like that, so she popped off as well with her pride refusing to waver. Fine, it was me. I poured tons of laxatives into the refreshments. The funniest thing is, I don't regret doing it at all, except for the fact that Carla was not poisoned too. 
It is clear that you two were never meant to be together. I am doing the Lord's work, and you should thank me for it. With a sudden burst of anger, Margaret snatched the wedding video CD from the player and threw it forcefully onto the ground. With a furious stomping of her foot, she shattered the disc into pieces, and the sound echoed throughout the room. This is her desperate attempt to destroy the evidence and erase the truth and the pain she has caused. You're telling no one about this, she stormed out. Get some tape or glue. We can still fix this. We did not hurry off and we did not try to find a tape or glue at all. What are you doing? We can still save the evidence. Joshua and I chuckled a bit, but I was honestly impressed by how concerned he was for us. I think I know where Joshua got his golden heart from. Dad, do you know the production company that recorded and edited our wedding has the original footage, right? Yeah, they keep it in case we want revisions for the final edit. We can just contact them and request for another copy of the footage. Oh, is that right? Sorry, let's call them up then. And so we did. Without wasting any time, I quickly made a call to the production company. Although I was worried they would not be available right now since it is past their working hours. Finally, the call connected. I immediately explained the urgency of the situation and the need for a replacement copy of the wedding footage. The production company recognized the seriousness of the situation and agreed to provide a new copy of the unedited footage as soon as possible. We all collectively sighed in relief. For a moment there, we were scared. We would not be able to report it to the police immediately and my mother-in-law would have more time to hide herself from everyone now. Finally, the long-awaited package arrived. We gathered in our living room. We watched it again to make sure we did not just hallucinate something out of desperation to make sense of the terrible thing that just occurred at our wedding. Minutes turned to hours as we watched the entire video and then it happened. There it was, the exact moment I had paused on that fateful night. I trembled with a mixture of anger and disbelief until Joshua said, we have the evidence now. We will not let her get away with this. It's time to take action. With the truth revealed, Joshua and I wasted no time in seeking legal counsel. We consulted with a skilled attorney, presenting the evidence and sharing our story. You have a strong case. There is a good chance that justice will be served, the attorney said. The legal process began with dispositions, interviews, and gathering of witness testimonies. Our wedding guests who had fallen ill due to Margaret's actions were all contacted and they expressed their willingness to cooperate and provide statements. It was truly embarrassing to reach out to them after what had happened, but we knew it is for their own good as well. It became clear that my mother-in-law's malicious act extended far beyond our wedding day. After the judge's careful consideration of the evidence presented and testimonies provided, the court finally found Margaret guilty. She is now expected to cover the expenses of our guests' medical bills, which would surely amount to thousands of dollars. She also received a restraining order that prohibited her to have any contact with Joshua and I. Are you okay? I checked up on Joshua because he has always been a mama's boy and it must have been hurting him. Yeah, I mean, I never imagined our relationship would come to this point, but it was a necessary step to protect you and our future together. My commitment is to you, Carla. We are a team. Joshua remained firm with his decisions. I could not be any more prouder of the man I married. After the restraining order against Margaret, it was clear 
that this had a profound impact on the family dynamics. When the news of the restraining order reached Richard, he found himself at a crossroads in his own relationship with her. Joshua, Carla, you were both so courageous in protecting yourself. It made me realize that I can no longer have someone in my life who is capable of such cruelty. Your mother's betrayal shattered my trust in her, so I have made the difficult decision to sever ties with her. I'm divorcing her. Joshua and I exchanged a glance, both surprised and relieved by the firm resolve in his father's voice. This news carried a sense of finality and closure to a chapter filled with pain and deceit. Dad, we understand that this must have been an incredibly difficult decision for you. We support you wholeheartedly in whatever choices you feel is best for your own happiness. We're here for you, just as you have been there for us throughout this mess. I nodded in agreement, and a weight seemed to lift from the room and was replaced by a renewed sense of unity and family instead. After being informed that Richard is divorcing her, Margaret financed a multi-destination honeymoon for Joshua and I in a feeble attempt to remedy the situation and salvage some form of redemption. We know this is all empty gestures and temporary fixes, but we still cautiously accepted the offer while maintaining the restraining order against her. It was the least she could do after ruining our own wedding. While Joshua and I embarked on our multi-destination honeymoon to Hawaii, then venturing to the breathtaking landscapes of Europe and finally exploring the vibrant cities of Asia, we could not help but reveal the joy and love that surrounded us. Each destination seemed to reinforce the strength of our bond and the beauty of our union. Joshua and I decided to share the joy and celebration of our love with the world by uploading both our wedding video and honeymoon snapshots to our social media accounts to let our friends and loved ones be part of our journey. There was an overwhelming amount of responses pouring in to congratulate us and express their supports, but others recognized Margaret's sabotage in the wedding video and unleashed their frustration upon her. Wait, is that what I think it is? Margaret pouring something into the drinks? <laughs> wow, a typical mother-in-law sabotaging her children's happiness. How original. I am in awe of your love story and I am sorry you had to experience this betrayal on your wedding day. You both deserve better. Wishing you all the love and support as you move forward with her toxicity. Sending virtual hugs your way. Unintentionally, we tarnish Margaret's reputation even further, and it is now beyond repair. With each day passing by, Margaret felt the irreversible consequences of her betrayal. The social media backlash and the loss of her son, husband, and financial stability weighed heavily on her. She realized that her attempts to buy her way back into our lives had been in vain. The money she had spent on our honeymoon only served as a painful reminder of her own loneliness and estrangement. The sweet taste of justice is a tough pill to swallow, and I bet it poisons her inside. But hey, so were the laxatives she gave to our guests, right? Oh, Karma, you truly have a wicked sense of humor.